Okay, today we're going to do watercolour portraits. They are like the hardest thing in the world to do, especially from a live model. Um, I'm going to do something similar to this. This is using a very limited palette of primary colours. And we're going to uh, look at the pattern of light that falls on this face. That is the big thing about doing watercolour portraits. I've got a few examples of previous ones, what I've done, that demonstrate this. Uh, so here is one that I, more, well I didn't more or less do it from this drawing, I think it was the same pose. I did a drawing first to understand how the light is falling on the face and then here, this is the same model uh, in the same pose and again trying to pick out that pattern of light. It's quite useful actually to draw that pattern of light and what I do, I bring people's attention to the Jimi Hendrix posters of the 60s where they I think took a black and white photograph and just use light and dark and if you can actually think like that uh, it makes watercolour portraits much easier. It's all about the pattern of light because with watercolour you have to leave the light. That is the big thing. And don't mind about your splodges or anything like that. You just have to own everything and if it doesn't work do another one. Um, I've got a, another one here as well which shows some techniques that are useful. So this was done about 100 years ago, um, and this was actually, I think, done in situ at the Sussex County Arts Club. It's on this lovely cardi paper, and again, I'm using that very limited palette of burnt sienna and Payne's grey, a little bit of blue and yellow ochre. And I don't know if you can see here, I've done some lifting off and also softening edges. So those, one of, uh, those are kind of two important things uh, to know about when you're doing watercolour portraits. Um, so, on with the show. So, I've got here uh, I've got here my colours and my kit, so I'll just go through that. Um, so I've got various large watercolour brushes, because I'm going to be using a very wet wash, so I need big ones. Um, a couple of Chinese for detail. This thing, which is a little uh, rubber shaper, colour shaper it's called, it's got a silicon tip and it's very useful for just applying paint directly onto your paper, uh, which I like to do when I'm doing uh, watercolour portraits. And then a smaller brush, a Chinese brush, and this is a very important one. This is a very good lifting off brush. It's quite stiff. I think it's a sea white acrylic brush, and it's absolutely marvellous. It's like rather like a toothbrush, but for paint. I can just demonstrate. Uh, um, so this will do lifting off. So when you haven't got the bone right or anything like that, you can just use this to scrub away some paint. <clears throat> it doesn't affect the uh, quality of the paper too much and you can just dab it away so you're almost sculpting the paint. But you need to go back to the paper to get those light areas. So these are the colours I'm using. I'm sticking to uh, more or less primary colours, but not exactly. Um, so I've got Quinacridone Gold, which is a lovely colour. It's this one here. And that is a very kind of warm, almost greenish colour, but it's got a nice yellow going on in it. Um, and then here I've got Elysian Crimson, which is my red, which when mixed with that makes these lovely warm colours. And I use Indrathene Blue. I'll just put it up to the camera so you can see the name. Indrathene Blue. Um, and that's uh, a cooler blue than your average, but I find it very satisfying. Um, <clears throat> so more or less, that's all we're doing. I might need a bit of Payne's Grey. And I've got here uh, Burnt Sienna as well, because I just can't resist my Burnt Sienna. Oops, let's get that nice and pure. And you see, so that's got a nice warmth to it. Whoa and it disappears very fast. So those are the colours I'm using. That's my little kit. Um, I'll just go through the process of putting uh, how I got to this stage of uh, painting this picture. It's actually from a drawing I did some time ago and it's quite a good idea to work from your own drawings because when you're in the studio with a model you're always fretting about when the paint's drying, what bit's that, uh, <clears throat> and it's all a bit of emergency. So working from drawings, I think, is a completely valid way of working. Um, so my picture, ah, oh, here we are. <clears throat> this is uh, the drawing I'm working from. This is lovely as Sumi the ballet dancer. Doesn't look terribly like her. Uh, she's Japanese. Um, 
but not so Japanese there. But this is the drawing I'm working on. And you can see it's just pencil on a brown paper with some white crayon. So within uh, the drawing, sorry, my light's glaring on it, you can see I put highlights of white, and that's what I'm going to try and leave and remember that's there. Um, <clears throat> one way to do that is to actually draw the pattern of light. So here, I don't think you can see it terribly well, with some tracing paper, I actually drew the pattern of light with red. Um, just put it on white so you can see what it looks like <clears throat> to understand the pattern of light. And with watercolour, it's quite useful if you just draw it in lightly with a watercolour crayon, so just so you remember it's there. So I'm going to try and paint uh, this picture um, <clears throat> using uh, a tracing I did earlier of the pattern of light. Okay, so here we go. Um, and I think it's quite useful because a lot of this actually disappears, so I'm not worrying about detail. So I'm just concentrating on the face. And when things are ambiguous in paintings, I think it actually makes more sa uh, satisfying for the viewer. So, oh, how am I going to do this? Right. So I'll put that there. Put my stuff there. I've got my kit to hand. So the first thing I'm going to do... Uh, I trace this um, and I can actually draw the pattern of light with a nice watercolour crayon onto this. I think I've done the nose, <coughs> but just to prove that I can do it. So I think I'm going to use red. And so there's a light area here. I'm just doing it very faintly. You probably can't see. And there's a light area here. There's light on her nose here and her cheekbone. And then light here as well and the bottom lip. Uh, and then there's a bit of light here and here. And then there's light on the knuckles as well. So what I'm going to do <clears throat> is actually wet the paper a lot with a spray. Because I want this to be very wet. So it's going to take a bit of a time and I'm going to have to... Um, <clears throat> Uh, wait for areas to dry. Curses, that red. <laughs> that red didn't work. Well, it's interfering with my paint. So I'm just going to get rid of that a bit. And as it's watercolour crayon, it will more or less disappear. There we go. I'm just going to dab that a bit. Okay, so first I'm going to mix up a sort of variation on flesh tones. Uh, with my quinacridone gold and a tiny bit of Lizzie and crimson and actually have a big big brush <clears throat> and I'm going to go on and see what happens. Ooh, that's nice. Such a lovely colour. This is Fabriona rough paper which again is my favourite and I'm just going to take that. Ooh, it needs a bit more crimson I think. More or less everywhere set where it's light yeah. and you can see the paper is really wet you have to be quite brave to do this and I'm going to just flood it with water I think the whole thing or wash go up here so this is my initial wash little bit of burnt sienna in my mix to make it a bit fleshier um, and then she goes like this and I'm just going to actually flood the whole thing because what I'm going to use is my kitchen towel as a tool and I'm just going to add some background up here oh I could get one of my uh, purpose-built brushes which I can't find those hake brushes are very good for this, this kind of thing. So I can actually go on here and spread the wash out. And then I'm going to go in and dab away the light areas. So I'm, while it's still wet, you can do this. And you get nice soft edges when you do this. And you have to press quite hard because you don't want the water coming back into that area. 
and so we got a little flash of light on her nose here and her cheekbones and here particularly bottom lip fingers and here another finger oops and where else her eyelids and we got another cheekbone and nose the nose is very important you can see there's a little ball of light on the end of her nose and you've just got to get that one in otherwise it won't look like a nose so you can see I'm refinding the light areas <clears throat> and what I can do now is actually add a bit more color to that because watercolors always dry lighter than you think I'm just going to get my reference so I can see it mm -hmm. okay and this is very pale I wanted it pale but I need to put on some more colour now so again with this nice big brush I'm going in there and I'm going to make a nice lot of wash ooh that's a hell of a colour and just put that on and you can see it actually just spreads out and then we've got the hair doing this and we want some more colour over here and here well no not really and there and I'll have a smaller brush with this and I'm going to add some of the dark areas and while it's wet you can do a lot with the watercolour so you can see all the colours spreading out but you have to be quite delicate because you don't want it to spread out too much um, and whoa, that's entirely too much paint ooh, that's a whoa, what a lovely colour so I'm just going to put that in there and you get this nice soft edge by her cheek and see what happens and then got some darkness there and here I like these colours because <clears throat> when I add the blue to the yellow it will turn green which I don't want but if I add the blue to the red it will actually uh, go purple which I do want I'm just going to dab that away so you want your kitchen towel about your person all the time and I want to get rid of some of that and see what's going on here go down there Maybe poor Sumi's getting covered in <coughs> uh, colour. So I'm going to go in here. And I suppose the nice thing about the drawing is a lot of it does disappear <coughs> away from you. So you're not worried too much about the detail. So I'm just going on here. Woo. And you can see how crazy you can be. But this actually adds a lot to your drawing so if I can just get that, oh, that there and that there and know that you can rescue things by scrubbing out with a little brush or the magic sponge eraser and softening edges uh, <clears throat> I think I need a big brush and lots of color let's see what happens when I do this whoa look at that cool look at that color it's fantastic and then I can just drop a little bit more in there here we have a bit <coughs> golden to get that intense to get the idea of that shadow and a good way of practicing is to work from your own drawings because as I say when you're faced with the model you find that it's uh, watercolors are very frustrating because you're always waiting for bits to dry and bits not to dry and uh, where it's wet but you're sort of um, fixated about doing the eyes or something well it's a bit too tense but let's just go with it and I will find that this will dry much lighter ah, so I think I need to put some background up here Woo! look at that cool and perhaps get a big brush and spread that out actually it's drying a bit so this is seriously wet and wet and I'm using tube watercolors but I find that uh, particularly Alice in Crimson and uh, uh, Burnt Sienna are very fleeting 
um, and they'd sort of disappear on you like nobody's business. So I'm going to add, this is dry now, but I want that to be warm. So I'm just going to add ah, some of the quinacridone gold up there. And you can see the water's busy uh, consuming her at the moment. But I hope if I go back in with my kitchen towel, I can refine her a bit. So I just want to dab away here a bit, I think. Oops, and I want to dab away there quite strongly. And probably on the eyeballs, why not? Just do that. And then when everything, <coughs> if things are getting a bit too swamped by the colour, I can always scrub away, I hope. Or paint that, use white gouache. And my hands disappeared a bit. And now it's gone a bit pink. And using crimson's quite staining. I just want to go in there. And now I'm fiddling, but don't fiddle. Um, so I just want a little bit going on here and here and here. And then we've got the hair doing that. Uh, and then here and here. And the hand has disappeared on me, but hopefully I can get it back with a bit of the uh, blue. So now I'm going to add some blues. And they're going to bring out some more of the details. Um, maybe I should just do a little bit on her nose. The nose is always rather trying, so I'm just taking a little bit off there. Whoa! And I'm going to... Yeah. Ah. So now, you see, I'm worrying about fiddling now. Ooh. Spread that out, and it's doing quite a lot of useful things because it's wet. But I think I need that to be a bit more unified than it is. So I'm going to go in and use my kitchen towel. And hmm, I want to get those fingers to be a bit lighter. And what I'm going to do is soften those edges just here, just with water. Oops. Okay, so that's disappearing a bit too much, but this looks quite intense at the moment, but what will happen is it will dry and then go paler. So, <clears throat> new kitchen towel. So now, I quite like these effects over there, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to pick up some of the intratheme blue, which is really quite strong, more or less straight from the tube, and start adding a bit of detail, like her eyebrows. And, for instance, what her nose is up to over here. You see that? It's very, very strong. And it's slightly wet, so it's going to spread. And then down here, And I'm going to mix it in with some Elysian Crimson just here. Yeah. Damn. It's too wet. That has a certain charm. Making her smile a bit. So I suppose painting with watercolours, you're always trying to control water, which is not the easiest thing in the world. And when it's wet, it's going to spread. And when it's not, uh, you get a crisper line. So here I particularly want to catch that characteristic and then realise that I haven't left that white enough. Ooh. And I can go in and have a bit of a scrub later, I hope. But you can see that she's starting to come out of the picture now. Oh dear. Right, I've got to save this drawing. Um, <clears throat> so again, small brush, pure, interesting blue. And I'll wait developments around there and hope I can actually lift off with my brush. So here I'm trying to put the hair in. I'm just using the pure blue. I think I need a bit more shape in here. 
hand, what does she do? Dogs like that. And this actually describes the shape of her face as well. And then we've got stuff going on here. And I've got a little pencil line here I'm referring to. Oh, you can see it's all spreading. Maybe I should have waited till it was dry. But never mind. It all adds to the fun. And then again, picking up the blue, uh, pure blue, it's pretty much straight out of the tube. Oh dear, I made it look a bit cross. And I might need to soften that, I think. Um, let's get a brush. And maybe this one. And I'm just going to do something about her eyebrows. <coughs> maybe that's a bit here, so need to be a little oh, no, I'm making her look very cross. And then eyeballs, her, always the hardest. Um, see, I've lost my nerve already. I might go in and do a knuckle. So I'm just looking where the darkness of her knuckle is. Just here. Here and here, and then I'm going to put that in there and to catch what that finger's up to. And hope to God it comes out right in the end. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to have a bit of this going, whoa, going on and coming down here and disappearing into the mist, which I think is always a good thing with hands. Uh, and then I just want a little bit more of that going on here and here and here. So working from a good drawing, I think, is a good way into this. And what's happened here, her hair's gone completely mad, but it has a nice something or other to it. But I just wanted to find the edge of her head, really. And using your kitchen towel as a tool. Um, so now, am I going to be brave? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I'm going to just go in here and add some darker shadows because uh, I got the blue going on in my general wash. So, and there's a darker shadow there. And damn, the paper's dried. But I'm going down here and I'm going to add a little bit of the lighter colour. Clean my palette. So I need to soften that edge. There. Now I like the way the mouth is, so you have to kind of go with things, and if it's you know not quite right, but not bad, trick is to leave it alone. I'm going to soften that. Come down here for a nostril. And I'm going to soften that. So the softening of edges, just water. Now I'm just going to take, ooh, oh, I need to take that underneath the eye to define the lower lid. And uh, same here. It's rather sinister now, but just go in there. And I'm just going to, ooh, that needs lightening up there, but I will use my scrubbing tool to do that. And I need to define her nose a bit more <clears throat> and definitely soften that edge a lot. So now she's looking particularly miserable but I'm going to go in here and soften that all I hope. So it is this thing of trying to get people to look slightly less miserable. It's quite a defining thing this uh, this line from her nose but it does tend to make people look cross. <clears throat> so I'm just going in here, going around there, and here. Her. And I think I do need to soften this edge. So the trouble with watercolour is you wander off and do something else and then you find your watercolour's done something you don't want it to. Uh, so I think if I take that along there. Now she's looking really cross. Um, and I'm relying on the fact I can actually lift some things off. And that goes down there. Oh, right. Hmm. I 
think I need to actually define some of her by uh, adding some background. But first, I've just spotted something I need to do. I just want to lighten that area a bit as it goes around a corner. And there she is looking particularly cross. Uh, maybe that will require some scrubbing. Um, okay, so I was going to do a little bit of background. So I'm going to mix up something resembling a purple. So I'm using Elysian Crimson and my blue. Ooh, that's a hell of a purple. And I just want to go in here and define her, the edge of her face. Maybe this area. And a tiny bit of her neck. And again, now I'm going in here and soften edges. I'm going to use Crimson here, I think just to define that little edge there. Uh, and then I want a big brush to soften all that. And then I'm going to soften that edge again, just here. I'm just taking it up to my pencil line. Missing the nice shape of her cheekbones. So, I don't think she's going to end up looking Japanese, but soften that area. So, actually, having not harsh lines is quite good. And then, she is looking particularly scary, isn't she? Um, <clears throat> and I'm going to, and you can see this great pool of water there. I wonder if I could drag that away. Act. I'm hoping the water will do a lot of the work for me. Okay, I better persevere with her eyes. I need to soften that because that blue in there is really making her look cross. Right. Right, pluck up courage and do the eyes, I think. Oh no, I'm going to just see if I can get those lines in here and this is pure paint and there's one here and that one is doing that and then I want a knuckle and another knuckle yeah this is where it all goes to hell in the handbasket and then I want to lift some oh no lift some of this off. Well actually what I'm going to do is just add water and down here and I want to soften that edge too. So soften, soften, soften. So you want kind of the feeling of a hand without having to worry about really doing a hand. So I might wait to actually define more of the hand by using the background. Splot some of that in there. And it is drying a bit, so I've got a limited amount of time here before it's dried <coughs> and it gets more difficult to work. And I'm relying on scrubbing away. Whoa, sorry. I'll leave the camera wobbling. So this is wrong, so I'm just going to see if I can lift some of that off. And go in again. Something a little bit... Oh no, I'm fiddling now. Rats, you should never fiddle with a watercolour. But so if I take some of this, this is all wet, so this will float on nicely. And the trick is, I suppose, to own your shapes that you've made. Right, so I think the thing to do now is probably the eyes, which is always the hardest thing, because the eyes are the window of the soul, and if you mess that up, the painting will be rubbish. So, <clears throat> time to concentrate. I'm going to rely on being able to lift some of this area off to go back and define what's going on. So I need my little brush. Uh, so I'm going to take, this is an even smaller brush, I'm going to take some of the blue, or maybe some of the burnt sienna, you never know, to 
make it slightly less startling. And look at the structure of the eye. Oh dear, this is always the hardest bit. And unfortunately that's wet, but there. Yeah. Right. So let's and it is useful to have a good pencil line at this stage. And then we've got the little tear duct here. And the eyeball. And I've left in, oh dear, now it's disappeared on me. The <coughs> um, the, the little dot on the eye, uh, which always makes the eyes come alive. So again here, coming around here. Uh, and that is the little dot. No, but there is the pupil. Uh, yeah. And then a little tiny bit here. And what I'm going to do is just use pure water to smooth, oops, smooth that down a bit. Make it seem like she's got a pupil. I think in the fullness of time, um, I would have done this much slower. But I do want to not do that a bit. And then she's got a line there, and here, and there. <coughs> right, so it's going all right so far. So what I, and you can see what's happened here. So that's all gone a little bit mad. So you have to keep your eye on a watercolor for quite to see what the water might do to you. So, yet yeah, more kitchen towel. I want to go in there, dab that away a bit. Uh, ah. And you have to, with watercolour portraits, you have to own the bits that work and the bits that don't work. Um, so now I'm going to tackle the hair and I'm going to use my little paint applier, my little silicon tip. I'm going to pick up some pure blue and I'm just going to draw it on. Ooh, and that is actually demonstrating something else. Because this wash is wet, you can actually push some of the paint away. That's not so wet, and that's a bit wet. So I can actually add a little bit more uh, uh, detail by gouging away the wash. You can use a palette knife for that. And also uh, credit cards. You don't have to have this fancy dancy tool. I did manage to find these rubber tip things in little ones. For hardly anything, because it was little. Uh, and they sell them in art shops for about ten ninety nine each. So... <laughs> Uh, they were called plasticine shapers, I think. And I think I want a little bit darker area there. You can see the paint is going on almost in its pure form. And then I got a nice little bun. Ooh, that's wet, so I can do some gouging. Oops, or not. Uh, yeah, maybe not. Ooh, yeah, a little bit of gouging going on there. I think I need a little bit of red going on here. Ah, uh, let's go in there and get some blue on there. Woo! <clears throat> and I suppose the thing to take away from watercolours is A, practising, and B, messing around. So sometimes it will work, sometimes it won't work. Woo, she does look cross. Uh, <clears throat> but never mind. Uh, so I'm coming in here with some just some red to buck this up a bit. I think I'm going to leave that for a little while and come back and do some scrubbing. But I think I might have to wait for it to dry for that. And I'm going. I'm leaving this area because I think it worked quite well. I think that's going to require some scrubbing, and then I probably will add a little bit more background. So she's got this lovely shape. Ah, bun. Ah, crap.
what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to spray that area because it went wrong and hope sometimes the background can help. Right, so new water and I'm starting again. What I've been doing is actually using a palette knife because this wash was so wet and I can actually go in and describe some of her hair. So you can actually use a palette knife to scrape away some wash, which I think works quite well. Um, it doesn't do the paper much good, but um, it does actually add detail where you want it. So you can use that as a technique. I think that's all too dry. Uh, so I'm going to go in and see if I can lift off some areas. So new water, lots of kitchen towel, my nice little scrubby brush. And let's see if I can lift off some areas that are annoying me. Um, I'm just looking. Uh, so here, maybe I should lift off a little bit there. So I'm almost sculpting the um, uh, the light back into it. So it's all about the light with watercolour because you have to leave that area white. And I think that needs definitely to be softened. So I'm just going in, scrubbing it away, refinding the light areas like there. And that's gone a bit weird, so I'm going to scrub that away. And leaving ambiguous soft edges actually adds to a painting, I think. It's a shame she looks so cross. Um, and I don't know, hmm. Uh, <coughs> sorry, in, in the artistic process, so I'm just going to go in here and soften that edge by scrubbing. And then looking at what the knuckle is actually doing. Down there. And again here, so this edge dried quite hard, and I can soften it like that, ish, and the other end of her finger, and here too. So again, I want to soften this edge. Some colours are a bit more staining than others, so it's quite hard to lift them off sometimes, but that's all right. Looking like a hand. Hmm, what am I going to do about the rest of the hand? That's all wet, so I'm a bit worried about scrubbing away, but I'll give it a go. I'm just going to scrub that away to indicate the rest of her hand. That is all wet, so that's really not going to work. So I'm going to use my kitchen towel to find the bit of that hand. So I'm just going to scrub that a little bit more down here. I can use my kitchen towel because it was still wet to actually build that up. And that needs to go there. So we'll call that hand, I think. I don't want to go crazy with the scrubbing because it will affect the paper, but I just want to recapture some light areas and that's more like that use kitchen towel to take that away ish <clears throat> and then I'm going to try and define some more areas around here and add a little few little finishing touches uh, to the face I just need to clean my palette and get some more kitchen towel kitchen towel is the watercolor is greatest tool well other than light um, so a little bit more detail here and there so I think I want a nice wash of a uh, warmer warmer version of the red so I've got my Elysian crimson add a little bit of this gold to it yes so I'm fiddling now this is really annoying so I'm just going to go in there and add a little bit more detail here and I'm going to soften those edges with water and then oh there's that little shadow under the ball of light so I'm just going to try and put that in but see now I'm fiddling leave well alone so I just want that to be a little bit darker just here and under here 
and I'm going to soften that edge and just drag that wash around a bit. But she does look very cross. <laughs> I'm going to take that around there and maybe put it there. So now she's looking like a raccoon. Just a tiny touch of blue just to darken that area there. Yeah, see, shouldn't fiddle. And again here, just put a little bit more going on there. And drag that round a bit because now she looks rather ill. Um, and then I think soften the edge there. Hmm. See, never fiddle. Oops, my poor drawing has uh, <coughs> suffered, but never mind. So I'm just going to go in here and scrape some off for her cheekbone. Yes, now she looks like a very cross raccoon, but never mind. So that needs to be lightened, I think. And I think the thing is to just leave well alone. I'm just going to do a little bit of scrubbing around here just to soften that edge. But sometimes you get nice blobs that really work for you. And that needs to be lightened a bit, I think. Oh dear, now she's looking even crosser. So I just want to define this area and what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a dark colour to make that the hand, as it were. So I'm going to take my big brush, biggish brush, no, that's not my biggest brush, that's my biggest brush. And I'm going to mix up quite a dark wash of mainly blue, but with a hint of purple, I think. And I'm going to try and look at what that hand's actually doing. And it goes like that, yeah, and like that. Oops. And then I can spread that out, I hope, just by adding water, not disturbing the uh, the area underneath. But I want that to be a bit more ambiguous, so I'm just going to go in here and oops, no, I'm fiddling. So I should have left well alone. But just get the idea of uh, the hand, the shape of the hand. <sighs> so I think I will leave well alone because I don't think it's going to get any better. And I don't know if you could see every time I fiddled, I sort of made it worse. So I think the trick with watercolour portraits is to do them really quickly. I might want to, let's see, I'm going to fiddle again. Just to do something with her eyeballs. So I want a little bit of colour think because this is rather white so I just want a little bit of shadow here there we go that's looking more like an eyeball uh, and I'm just going to leave it I think because it's not going to get any better so she fiddling and I'm just going to add one more tweak so I just want to get that to seem right yeah Fiddling again, fiddling again. So I'm just going to soften that a bit by just adding water. And over here. Okay. And I think I need to just indicate where that knuckle is. Oh dear, I've got to leave well alone now. So you can see watercolours suffer a lot from fiddling but some of the marks I made earlier work really well I thought so you don't have to be fantastically accurate it doesn't really look like her looks like her rather cross grandmother but I'm just going to lighten that area there and leave a lot of it alone oh dear I've seen another bit I need to do ah. stop me stop me I have told you my watercolorist joke haven't I which is how many people does it take to paint a watercolor 
one to paint it and the other person to tell them to stop. And I need to soften that edge. Ah! No, I don't like that, so I'm going to blot it away. So I've just got a hint of it going on. So there we are, that's kind of a radical way of painting uh, watercolours, watercolour portraits. As I say, it's the hardest thing in the world to do. And just try out a few from your own drawings. This was rather a radical wet and wet way of painting, rather than the traditional uh, sort of overlaying glazes. But <clears throat> it shows you what you can do and what you have to live with. You might not get an accurate portrait, but as long as it looks like a face, that's the main thing to remember. And look at that pattern of light. That's the thing you've really got to catch. And generally it's quite um, distinct. So when you're painting a portrait, always make sure there's good light on the subject so you've got something to work with. And what you want to do is uh, use your kitchen towel to refine that light. You, if you leave these areas uh, with a hard glaze, they will be quite harsh. Uh, so I've got a nice softness going on there and the soft edge of the side of the face. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, so next week we're doing gesture drawing, which should be fun, which is mainly scribbling of uh, uh, trying to catch interesting poses. So I'm going to be doing ballet dancers and gymnasts, I think. And see, I want to fiddle. I want to correct that knuckle, which is more angular. No, see, bad, bad, bad. Uh, no, leave alone, leave alone, because the watercolours are so delicate, the more you fiddle, the worse they're going to get. So if you've got something that kind of works, leave it and move on. Okay, so see you next week, guys.